Now here's an age old problem. Drilling in the end. The mark of the pillar drill is how big it is. It's designed for drilling in the short section of the timber. We want to turn it up and even with one like this, you bring the table out of the way or I can pivot this thing out of the way. Yeah, I can pivot this out of the way and drill that way. But even then, how accurate is this? You know, when you're using machinery, you want things pinpoint accurate. You don't want it roughly guessing, otherwise you might as well shove it in a vice and get a hand drill and just drill it in. You know, that's the sort of accuracy we'd be getting. So this, it doesn't work for me. I want some way of drilling that way that is going to be as accurate as drilling that way. This isn't going to do it. So, come with me. Here, I've got what used to be an old saw. That's it. It was a beautiful machine. It did all sorts of wonderful things. Look at this. This is what it was and what it, oops, what it did. These are the sort of things you get out of it. Absolutely amazing. Now, this bit is what interests me. On the back of this machine, it has a port for a chuck. And the green, obviously, you can see closer. There. A port for a chuck. Now, a saw blade runs the wrong way for a chuck. So you can't just take the blade off and attach a chuck to it, and thus you'll get a drill. Do what? You'll get a drill that's undoing all the time. Um, that wants to drill outwards instead of drill in. The other end is where you get the facility for a chuck if you've got one in there. This machine, luckily enough, has one. Now the machine's beautiful, but it's, it's redundant. It's been sitting in the storeroom for a good 10 years because I didn't want to get rid of it because it's a good machine. Um, but it's going to be put to some use. What I'm going to do is utilise this, or the motor of it, and make myself a horizontal drill press. Now over here, which is a far corner of my bench. I've got all the cross cut and everything going down here with the chop saw. This is the far end of it here. What I want to do is in this very corner where I've got a box, I want to mount that there. But it's going to be in the way. However I mount it, it's going to be an obstacle if I want to put big sheets there. So I want to cut the surface and make it into one that flips out of sight. So I can flip it away when I'm not using it, and flip it back into this when I'm using it. <coughs> that then will put me on a flat platform. Getting it that way is, at the moment, still a tricky situation. How I get it to rise up and fall down. But looking at the machine, I've got a good three inches. So that means I'm centering six inch timbers. I don't think I'm going to ever go above that. That way, no problem. I can move it side to side. But that way, six inch timber to centre is the most. Um, if I've got to go beyond centre, I, I just have to turn it over. I'm pretty sure it's going to cover all my work, if not 99.9% .9 of it. So I don't think I'm going to concern myself about levitating it at this stage. As for the timber this way, the idea is once I've got it mounted, I will put a spindle in the chuck to give me the exact accuracy of it. No point doing it until it's all mounted and solid because I can be out. And trying to mount that to be in line with this is a reverse way of doing things. So once it's in, I'll pin a line from the chuck, dead centre line from the chuck, um, and then set in some bench dogs, which I can just drop in, timbers can go tight against them. Then I can go coming sideways and it will stop timbers that way and keep it accurate. Shh, shh. It's all in theory at the moment. Like with everything else with me, it'll develop as I'm building it. So I'll make start now building it and we'll see how it's going to work as I'm doing it. So first thing, let's get the machine stripped down and see how I'm going to mount it and what I'm going to do with this worktop. Right, well that's how I stripped down, and um, there were four long bolts set into here, um, which had gone right the way through and was holding the, the whole case um, together. I've 
taken them out and put them back through and put some nylon nuts on the top that keeps the case in um, the four bolts that held this on I'm hoping flipped over should help to hold it down to the surface I'm going to mount it on but this is going to have to be changed I'll have to strip that down and see what's uh, to be changed but I've kept everything as neat and tidy together as I can because you never know at some point in the future I might want to put this back together again well that came apart reasonably easily um, <clears throat> you've got the three wires coming out of the motor and an earth point on the side of the body of the motor so what I've done now I made a little note of the wiring just to make sure that I don't get anything wrong but it's all reasonably straightforward it's a four core to go from that to this or two two cores um, four cores are a little bit rarer um, if you want in circular I haven't got so I'll, I'll use two um, circular two cores that can be mounted somewhere else and that can be mounted somewhere else and I can just run a thing from here now it's a matter of um, positioning it and getting the bench side of it ready to mount this into so I've started off by cutting a square hole out of the uh, bench where I want the motor to go um, next what I want to do is make a piece to go back in there but not just any old piece to fit in it's got to be a spinning tabletop so in other words, I need it to be hinged somehow so that it will turn over. So the motor can be fastened and when I don't want it, I can rotate it out of the way and I'm left back with a nice worktop, even if it's not perfectly smooth, perfectly flush, doesn't matter, as long as it's out of my way so I can carry on with the timbers up and down this benchway. So that space is open and ready. Next what I did, well I cut a couple of pieces of timber. Um, now one is MDF which will match up with the top so that's going to be the bottom piece. Um, and then a piece of um, plywood. It's got a nice four micro surface on it, nice and stable, and it's a very dense ply. Then I've got a rod, and on the router table, I route it out so the rod will go through the middle. Now it's a little bit offset, making the top a little bit higher. Um, which is well, it's exactly how I wanted it on the table. Um, so that's that's perfect for me. And as you can see, I'm just clipping them on there, and it gives us a perfect spinning top. Now all I need to do is route out underneath, or cut out, or whatever, um, make slots underneath for this to fit in. The table. I'm in a bit of a tight spot here for me to get a camera in, but um, I think you can just about make me out there. What I need to do before I close these two up is I need to mark that on the underside of this so that this is sitting flush with this. Um, and to do that, I need to hold that there and then go on it and mark it. Um, so if you want to come and help me, it'd be ideal, but you can't. So what I shall do. Get some old wood and stick them on there. Oh, get some heavy weights on there. Then, that's quite that. Good. Put that on there and get under a mark it. That's right there. Okay, that should give me a good indication where I want to be. Push up the weight back. Okay, now I need to remove that material. How far do I need to remove it? That much. So I'm going to start off by just getting a drill that size and drill in that way. If I can get the right angle drill. You can probably guess why I've done that so deep, but whether it's going to be successful or not, yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay, might have to cut it short and we shall see how we go.
and the tricks you have to come up with when you're working on your own. Now I expect some fine tuning before this works smoothly, but in principle, this is the idea I'm working at. Right, so, that'll be, that one there has come out, which is expected because it's loose. It is a way to manage, it is a plate on it all the other. But when it does, and same at this side, that should get me reasonably level. 